this is Praxis, and today we're just finishing up this entire floor surface so that it's ready to accept the concrete. Uh, my dad has suffered a foot injury. It sounds like he has sprained it, like an actual sprain. A lot of people overuse the word sprain, but he has a legit sprain, which is, you know, pretty painful and, you know, has you out of commission for a few days. He should be back in, in a couple of days, and we're going to be having some nice weather. It's going to be in the mid-40s. No wind, allegedly, and sunny, so uh, I think we're going to be working on the roof that day. We're still waiting for the windows, which should come about a week after that, and uh, the only other important thing to do is just get this floor uh, together. So that's what we're working on today. Uh, Josh was doing some stomping earlier today. Uh, right now he's over in the root cellar doing some work in there, and we're going to jump over there in just a little bit to see what he's working on. But first I wanted to kind of show you what we've uh, gotten accomplished here today. First thing is right behind you. Uh, this, uh, this is going to be the vent. This is where all of the air that comes through all these uh, subfloor tunnels that gets blown down from that corner over there, this is where it's all going to come up over in this area. I made a box out of foam and some cardboard uh, and uh, slid it into the little register hole and I covered it up in plastic and tape uh, so that when we put the concrete around it, it's not going to you know, you know, pull the pieces apart or anything. Uh, but in case the concrete does kind of nudge things around, and concrete is its a bunch of rocks, so you know, it, it, it has some force, it could push things around. I made this uh, little uh, marking on the top, and you can see some writing here. And this little X right here uh, has a note that says that this point is 26 inches from here and 32 inches from here. So after we get the floor poured, we can just double check the measurement and make sure this thing hasn't been significantly banged around. Other than that, I was working a little bit on the outside air adapter, right over here. Just getting that all ready to accept the metal pipe that's going to be coming out of there. I put a, a four inch to three inch adapter in there. It's four inches of conduit all the way under the floor, uh, and it goes down to three inches here. Now you might wonder, well, why didn't I just do three inches the entire way? Well, I just figured it would provide for easier airflow, a little less friction to have like a, a you know, more open area for most of it, and then it just narrows down to three inches because that's the size that most outside air adapters that I've ever seen, or all outside air adapters for wood stoves, uh, are always three inches. So I figure I'll just adapt it down and it'll come out of the ground uh, like that. The last thing that I'm working on today is for this pressure, ta uh, pressure tank. This is a pressure tank that is used to store water that comes up out of the well. I've got it on a little platform here and the platform is up on top of some cinder blocks. Uh, but in order to pour the floor, uh, you know, I can't have those cinder blocks there unless I want to get them locked into the floor, and I don't. I'd like to have a nice continuous uh, floor surface underneath it. So I planned ahead for that. Uh, on the platform here, the little wooden platform, I have some nail nubs sticking out on the four corners, and what I'm going to do, and I've already begun uh, work on it, is I'm making some uh, sticks up at the top, some little pieces of lumber. I've got them screwed up into the, uh, the floor joist there. I use screws instead of nails because you're going to be forced pulling it down and screws are going to hold a lot better than nails. Uh, and I'm just going to get some uh, tie down straps like you'd use on the top of your car. Just to put four of those at each of the corners. They'll hook around the nails, go up to the top, hook onto the top. Uh, you know, it's not the most efficient use of resources, but I've got plenty of tie down straps and they're only going to be tied up <laughs> for a uh, uh, I don't know, a couple of weeks until we get this thing uh, with the floor poured in here. So, uh, so that's the plan. I finish up all this stuff so it's 100% ready to go. Uh, and then a couple of days we're working on the windows. But for now, let's hop over to the root cellar to see what Josh has been working on. Okay, so here we are in the root cellar. I apologize if it's kind of dark. Uh, we haven't hooked up any of the lighting yet and the light tubes still don't have their top light collectors. Uh, but we do have some light coming in and I hope that it's enough to see me by. Josh, as you can see, he's doing some painting. Uh, one way of getting light in is just lightening up the walls uh, so that what light does get in here, instead of getting absorbed into the surface of the wall, it gets reflected around and you know, just spreads itself. So I've got some nice white paint. Uh, I think I did a video earlier uh, where I was doing a bunch of painting of all the other walls. I found out later that I was actually painting with off-white paint. Uh, you know, I, I didn't go out and I bought, bought, I didn't buy it for doing this, I just found it, you know, in some junk pile somewhere, and it looked kind of white, but then once we got, actually got it out, it wasn't quite white. So, Josh is going to uh, do the entryway, finish that up, and then with whatever paint he has left, we're just going to kind of go around and, and do the rest of this area, just to brighten it up a little bit more. And hopefully, it'll just make this uh, environment easier to navigate, even if you don't have the lights turned on. So, that's it. Thanks for watching.